Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about three commonly used supplements for prostate health, and I'm going to explain why two of them are actually going to shrink your prostate and improve your flow, while the other one may not. I'm Dr. Dave Clayton. Thanks for watching. Well, let's talk about the first one of these supplements, which is zinc. Zinc is commonly used for supporting prostate health, and it's for a good reason. Prostate tissue is one of the few tissues in the body that actually concentrates zinc. And the reason is that each cell has this engine that creates energy in the mitochondria, and it's called the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. And citrate is a component of that cycle, but it's not the end product. So when your cells are creating energy, they're consuming the citrate and turning it over as part of the cycle, but your prostate needs that citrate for another reason, and it's because it's an important component of prostatic fluid. So zinc actually works to stop that engine and redirect the citrate into the prostatic fluid. And in order to do that, your prostate cells are surrounded by these zip proteins. That's zinc importer protein. And that's a little pump that grabs zinc from your circulation and brings it into the prostate. And then that zinc stops the production of energy and turns that engine into a citric acid producing machine. So in the normal cell, anywhere else in your body, we've got the mitochondria as a growth engine, and in the prostate, we've got it as a producer of citrate or citric acid. So the zinc that we have in those prostate cells is slowing down prostate cell growth and creating citric acid. So when we think about pathologic states of the prostate, this is BPH, or benign prostatic hypertrophy, where we've got that obstruction and that difficulty with urination, or prostate cancer, what we see is dysfunction of that zinc uh, pathway such that the cells start creating more energy and it causes unregulated cell growth, which is that enlargement or in extreme cases, the prostate cancer. So we might think that taking zinc would stop that whole process. And if we have high levels of zinc in our bloodstream, maybe it'll prevent the prostate enlargement and the prostate cancer. Now, unfortunately, that's largely not the case. Now, about 40% of men are deficient in zinc, and replacing that zinc may help to support prostate uh, health, but it's really not going to shrink the prostate because it doesn't really matter to some extent how much zinc you have in your circulation or even in your diet, because if those zinc importer proteins aren't working, then you can't pump all that zinc from the bloodstream into the prostate. You're not going to get those super high concentrations that are necessary. And in fact, what we see is that the loss of the zinc concentrating ability of the prostate is one of the first signs of prostate disease. This graph, I think, really shows what I mean by this, is when the zinc importer proteins stop working, then it doesn't really matter how much zinc you have in the diet or even in your bloodstream because it can't be concentrated in the prostate. So in this study, we looked at tissue biopsies to look at how much zinc was in healthy tissue, BPH, and um, prostate cancer. And then we compared that to the serum or blood levels of zinc and the urinary levels of zinc. So how much we're excreting versus absorbing and concentrating. And what you see here is that in the normal prostate, there's these super high levels of zinc because those zinc importer proteins are concentrating zinc, pulling it out of the bloodstream and concentrating it in the prostate tissue. But BPH and prostate cancer cells, markedly lower levels of zinc. And when we compare that to the serum levels or the blood levels, what we see is that they're not too different. So you see the blood levels are a little lower in BPH and prostate cancer patients, but not a whole lot. But what really does change is the urinary excretion. So as you see, the prostate cancer patients have markedly higher levels of zinc in the urine because no longer are we able to concentrate it in the prostate and pull it out of circulation. What we're ingesting as a supplement or in food is just getting urinated out. 
So the bottom line is you should be getting enough zinc to support prostate health. However, getting high doses is unlikely to shrink the prostate, improve your symptoms, or even prevent prostate cancer. The recommended daily allowance for zinc through diet or supplementation is 11 milligrams daily. So try to hit that target, maybe a little above, but don't overdo it too much. There's some evidence showing that super high intakes of zinc may be associated with an increased risk of prostate cancer. So now we see that zinc is something that we want to have in the diet to support prostate health. But if we already have symptoms of prostate enlargement, it's not going to really move the needle and improve our symptoms. However, there are two supplements out there on the market that do have the ability to work perhaps as good or better than some prescription medications. And I'm going to show you that data next. So the next two supplements we're going to talk about are beta-cetosterol, which is a sterol molecule that's found in salt palmetto, which is commonly uh, recommended for prostate health, and lycopene, which is a red pigment found in red fruits and vegetables like tomatoes, watermelon, guava. So both of these work on the testosterone DHT pathway. Testosterone gets metabolized in the body via an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. And that transforms testosterone to a metabolite called DHT or dihydrotestosterone. And that DHT binds to receptors on the prostate and causes that prostate growth and enlargement that we see as we age. Now, finasteride is a commonly prescribed medication that inhibits 5-alpha reductase and has been shown to reduce symptoms of prostate enlargement by up to 20% or more. And these two supplements, beta-cetosterol and lycopene, both work on the same pathway. Lycopene works just like finasteride to inhibit 5-alpha reductase. So it inhibits the conversion of testosterone to DHT. Now, beta-cetosterol works further downstream to actually block the binding of DHT to its receptor on the prostate. So taking both of these gives you a kind of a one-two punch to inhibit this stimulatory effect of testosterone on the prostate. So here I've got a picture of beta testosterone compared to testosterone. And what you see is that they're pretty similar looking. So they're both in that steroid family of molecules. And it's easy to see how beta testosterone can compete for binding on the same receptor as DHT does. So let's look at some data on beta testosterone. This trial looked at 100 patients who took 15 milligrams of beta testosterone twice daily. And you can see here that we've got significant improvement in post-void residual. This is 13% reduction in the amount of urine retained in the bladder after a void. Also a 22% improvement in peak flow rate. So urinary flow improved, exactly what we're looking for when we're treating BPH. And a 20% reduction in the symptom score. So this is a qualitative assessment of how people feel before and after. And because we're inhibiting the binding of DHT to the prostate receptors, we're also getting an improvement in our free testosterone and a reduction in PSA. So for those symptoms of low testosterone, we're getting the double benefit of improving free testosterone while blocking its impact on the prostate where we don't want it to be creating that stimulatory effect and the prostate enlargement. And here's another trial looking at 200 patients with prostate enlargement who were given 60 milligrams of beta testosterone daily. So more patients, higher dose, and clearly there's a significant improvement in symptoms relative to even the lower doses. So we're looking at 60 milligrams here versus 30 milligrams in the previous trial. Now we've got a 48% improvement in symptom score, a 54% improvement in post-void residual, and a 54% improvement in peak flow. So pretty significant improvements in symptoms with beta testosterone as we get to these higher doses like 60 milligrams daily. So lycopene works on the same pathway as beta testosterone and it works differently in as much as it blocks the 5-alpha reductase. But in addition, lycopene also has anti-inflammatory and antioxidant benefits. So you see a kind of a combined effect on the prostate to reduce that tissue inflammation, reduce oxidative damage, and prevent the stimulatory effect of testosterone on the prostate. And at high doses, lycopene has similar efficacy to beta testosterone. 
you've got a 44% reduction in symptoms and a 48% improvement in post-void residual, and importantly, a significant reduction in PSA. So by blocking testosterone at both of these points, you've got an incredible ability to improve your symptoms. And when we compare these supplements, beta-cisosterol and lycopene, compared to medications like finasteride that work on the same pathway, you see results that are equivalent to or better than prescription medications. The studies I just showed you, the double-blind placebo-controlled trials, we've got 48% reduction in symptoms. We've got a 44% reduction in symptoms compared to a 23% reduction in symptoms on finasteride. And as you can see here, it takes about 16 to 24 weeks before we see that full effect. You need to be taking these supplements long enough to get that inhibitory effect on the prostate and get the maximum improvement in symptoms. And there's a good argument to be made that based on all of this research and data, that you should be getting that 11 milligrams of zinc daily to support prostate health. You need to have enough zinc so that if your zip proteins are working, they have enough zinc to pull into the prostate and keep it healthy and functioning normally. But don't expect that taking high doses of zinc is going to markedly improve your symptom. If you're looking for symptom improvement, consider taking either lycopene or beta cetosterol or both. They have a synergistic effect to block the stimulatory effect of testosterone as well as improve oxidative damage and prevent inflammation in the prostate, all of which results in these 40 plus percent improvements in symptom scores, as well as improvements in objective measures such as post-void residual and peak flow. Doses of lycopene go up to 500 milligrams twice daily. That's what's been studied in clinical trials. Uh, beta cetosterol, the dose I showed you earlier was 60 milligrams, which was delivered as 20 milligrams three times daily. All of these are reasonable choices if you're considering a natural treatment for prostate enlargement. And I want to give a quick shout out to all of you who posted your success stories on my previous videos. I really appreciate these comments. I love hearing that this information has really led to a benefit for you in terms of throwing away medications or improving your health or reducing symptoms. So thanks for sharing those. Please keep them coming. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.